Okay, welcome back to another Angular video. We've been working on this app for a while. I don't know if this is going to be the last one on the Angular piece or not, but basically the premise of this series was let's make the same web app, three different frameworks. I thought it'd be fun, and it has been so far. Hopefully you've been enjoying it, maybe following along. If you need a little Angular refresher, I think it's always fun um, just to, yeah, just do that. Refresh yourself with things that you think you already know because you always end up learning something new like I do. Not that I'm saying I know Angular like to the extent because I really don't. But anyway, I don't know if this is the last one of the Angular piece, if we'll move on to ASP.NET Core MVC in the next episode or not. But today we're going to create a button. We're gonna show click events really quickly. This isn't gonna be a long video, I don't think. And uh, what the button's going to do essentially is just clear the text in our text field. And so I'm gonna serve this up, and in the meantime, let's search material button, the angular material button. And we're going to use one of these predefined buttons that angular material provides because they look nice. So here's our text field, right? And I wanna put a button somewhere down here that if you click, it clears the text from this field. So first let's work on the button. I'm going to go to the API tab here, and here we can grab the import statement for our app module. So let's copy that, go back to our app module. We're going to import it. And then we're also going to say, hey, uh, let's import this map button module into our project by adding it to the imports array. And so now when we reference this material button in our code, our HTML, uh, it'll recognize it and style it appropriately. Let's find out if that's true. So if we go to the counter, here's our counter component. Here is our text area, right? And maybe right below this text area, I'm going to put a button. And there's different kinds of buttons that come with Angular Material. We can look through them. There's the regular button, just like this. But I like the raised buttons myself because they look more like buttons to me, either raised or the flat. And then they have different icon buttons here, if you're interested in that. But if we view the code, here is the mat raised button. And you can do different colors. We can do the primary color of our app, but I'm just going to stick with that. I'm going to copy the mat raised button color primary and just paste it inside of our opening tag. And the text of this button is just going to be clear. If we go back to our character count, here's the clear button. We can make it larger if we wanted to. You can mess around with the styling. I don't think that's necessary in this video, but uh, I believe you guys can, can do that. I think it looks pretty good as it is right out of the box. And also something to note, we made our toolbar primary color and notice our button, since it's primary color, it's the same color, right? It's referencing the same primary color, which is cool. So before we have it do what we need to do, let's just show off how to do click events real quick in case you need a refresher or didn't already know. So inside of parentheses, we're going to say the click, because this will reference the click event, and then we'll say equals put something in these quotations that you want to run. Like for instance, some method in our TypeScript file that we want to call. So maybe in here, I'll do public test. And it's not going to accept anything. And this is a pretty easy method. It's just going to alert and say, hi. Whoops, just like that. So we have this new method called test. And then what I could do is I could say, hey, when someone clicks on this button, let's run test and not pass in anything because it doesn't accept any parameters. So now if I go back to the app and I click our button, we now get the alert. It says hi, right? So that's how you can call methods with a click event. But what I can also try to do is, hey, let's just set text value to an empty string. Let's see if that works. I actually didn't test this out. So let's do text.value is equal to this empty string and it compiled so that's a good sign and let's go back to our app let's start typing and i'll put multiple rows we can see the character counts going up as we expect that's good and let's hit clear and now the character count went to zero and it cleared out the whole text area just like that so notice we didn't have to create a method to do this i just said hey text up value make its value the empty string and that might make it a little bit easier to read because we're not calling a method in our TypeScript, and then we're saying, okay, what are we doing in this method? Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory when it's something simple like this that we just do it in the HTML. At least that's my opinion. You might have a different opinion about that. But what's kind of cool about this, if you didn't notice, is we don't need 
anything in this character counter component class because everything we do logically is done in the HTML with Angular. I think that's pretty sweet, right? So when we display how many characters are shown, that's done purely in Angular in the HTML, right? We have some interpolation right here and we say, let's just show the length of that. And then we also have a click event, but we say what the click event does also in the HTML, which is pretty cool. All right, so this might be the last Angular video. We'll see if I think up of anything else that this app might need and that might benefit you going through and uh, yeah hopefully you find this fun and enjoyable and thanks so much for the the kind comments and the support and everything on this channel i really do appreciate it and if you like it consider subscribing and like the video and let me know you like it down below i i read all of my comments it's it means a lot to me and uh yeah take care